Well, welcome family and friends to Ben and Hillary's wedding. The day has finally come and we're all gathered here for this joyful and long anticipated occasion. I'd like to extend a special welcome to everybody who traveled to be here today. In these days and times, it can be a little tricky, but you're all here now, so sit back and relax and enjoy the Texas Hill Country. Next, I know that we're all looking forward to some serious celebrating shortly, but first, the bride and groom have asked everyone to have a great time and enjoy the ceremony for real, those here in person. So if you could uh, turn off your cell phones and um, enjoy the ceremony in person, but I would like to welcome everybody who is uh, tuning in online. Hope you enjoy the ceremony as well. Ben and Hillary, we have all gathered here in this place at this time and with joyful hearts to be witnesses and to celebrate the new life you begin together today. I think it's wonderful that you've chosen such a simple, no frills place like this, where we can all feel connected, not only with one another, but with the sky overhead, the very breezy wind, the little bits of sunshine we're getting today, and even with the dirt under our feet. And some of us actually wore high heels. <laughs> it reminds us of what is both necessary and natural, seeking out a partner to love, trust, and hold on to throughout all the milestones of life. And if you include beer, I mean, this is a brewery after all, right? It just doesn't get any better than that. I'd like to begin by sharing a reading from uh, Frederick, Frederick Beekner, who is a well-known theologian to set the tone and gather us in. The bride and groom say that they will love, comfort, and honor each other to the end of their days. They say they will cherish each other and be faithful to each other always. They say they will do these things not just when they feel like it, but even for better, for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, when they don't feel like it at all. In other words, the vows they make could hardly be more extravagant. They give away their freedom. They take on themselves each other's burdens. They bind their lives together. The question is, what do they get in return? They get each other in return. There will always be the other to talk to, to listen to. There is still someone to get through the night with, to wake and if they have children, they can give them, as well as each other, both roots and wings. If they don't have children, they can become the other's child. They both still have their lives apart, as well as a life together. They both still have their separate ways to find. But a marriage made in heaven is one where a man and a woman become more richly themselves together then the chances are either of them could ever have managed to become alone. The reading that you have both chosen today is The Art of Marriage by Wilford A. Peterson. The little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say, I love you, at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through all the years. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It is doing things for each other, not in the attitude of duty, or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is not expecting the husband to wear a halo or the wife to have the wings of an angel. It is not looking for perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is 
giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. It is finding room for the things of the spirit. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, it is being the right partner. The next reading you have also chosen. The symbolic vows that you are about to make are a way of saying to one another, you know all those things we've promised and hoped and dreamed? Well, I meant it all, every word. Look at one another and remember this moment in time. Before this moment, you have been many things to one another, acquaintance, friend, companion, lover, dancing partner, and even teacher, for you have learned much from one another in these last few years. Now you shall say a few words that take you across a threshold of life, and things will never quite be the same between you. And Ben and Hillary have chosen to write their own vows. At this time, I invite them to approach and join hands and make their promises to one another. Okay, should I go first? You go first. You can go first. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, I'm try to say this without crying. <laughs> You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hillary, the first time I met, I felt something I never felt before. You made me comfortable enough to be myself. And ever since then, you have been my safe place. As we grow together, I promise to love and support you unconditionally. Without you, I wouldn't be the man I am today. And nothing in this world matters more to me than having you by my side for the rest of my life. I love you, and I will always love you. Ben, I always ask my mother how she knew my dad was the one. Her response was always, it's a feeling you get. And that never made sense to me until I met you. And it all made sense. And I lost my my place. Ben, you were my best friend my partner, and my biggest cheerleader. I promise to be your best friend. I promise to respect and trust you for the person who you are and the person you will become. I promise to grow and change alongside with you and become the couple we are meant to be. Ben, I choose you to do life with, hand in hand and side by side, to do us part. Now that you've promised your faithfulness and taken each other's hand, your bond will be shown to everyone by the giving and receiving of rings. Okay, who wants to go first? There you go. Okay. And you can repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. It's in the right place. There you go. Yeah. Oh, there we there go. go. <laughs> okay. And Hillary, repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. As my love and faithfulness. <laughs> All right. Ben and Hillary, you have made your vows and given and exchanged rings in the presence of God, friends, family, and honored guests. At this time, I would ask everyone gathered here, will you support Ben and Hillary in this new life they have created? Will you offer good advice, be with them with good, in good times and bad, and in all ways, love and uplift them? If so, answer, we will. We will. The institution of marriage has been around a very long time. I pray that your marriage will be long 
and happy. And I now proclaim, by the power vested in me by both God and the state of Texas, that you are now husband and wife together. You may kiss the bride.